Imagine a world where you have amazing grades at university and also have time to hang out with your friends, have a relationship, build some projects and have also free time to expand your hobbies. You feel productive along the day and you feel accomplished. You've achieved something that most people only dream of. Wouldn't that be great? Just picture it for a second. You dedicate some time to study every day and when the exam comes, you crush it and have excellent results. And of course, you study and the rest of the day you can do whatever the hell you want. My hair is a little bit messy today, but well. I'm deeply against studying 16 hour days. It's the recipe to burnout and hating the process of university, which is something beautiful. We want to have a life, man. We do not want college to consume our whole life and we want to hang out with your friends, make some money, have a relationship and have some interest have a personality. So what would your life be if you had some extra hours each day and still maintain or even improve your grades? Right now, I'm sure that you're feeling stressed and overwhelmed because college is taking those vital years from you. So let me bring you the solution I found to study less, achieve more, maintain a YouTube channel, have a social life, expand my hobbies, go to the gym, and do whatever the hell I want. So remember the situation we imagined earlier? That's how I'm feeling right now. I just finished my first college semester of 2023 and I'm thrilled about the results I had. However, if you're new to the channel, you're probably wondering who the hell am I, why you should trust me, what is with the accent and universities even exist in Argentina? And let me answer all of these questions briefly. My name is Juan, I'm 20 years old, and I'm a student and content creator from Argentina and I'm studying the career of business management at the Universidad of Buenos Aires. For those who don't know the university, it's the best university in Argentina, it's top 10 in Latin America and top 100 best universities in the world. So it's pretty nice. And it's my third year here at UBA and along the way I had some bad results, but I changed my study method and my grades improved drastically. So it's been a year and a half that every class I take, I have wonderful grades. So I'm happy to share my study method with you. But first, we need to expand your productivity if you want to achieve the best results possible. So if you do not consider yourself a productive individual, I got your back. So here's the HQ productivity method. So first, let's take all this complexity about productivity. You see all these videos and tactics and courses and all that shit about productivity. But really being productive is very simple and it's not that hard. You just need a little bit of thinking and rearrangement of your schedule. If it seems good, let's get into it. So step number one, we will analyze our current routine. So for this, you will write down everything you do in your day, but absolutely everything. And please be honest with yourself. Don't be ashamed of yourself because of how much time you're wasting right now. It's okay, it's normal, I was there too. I used to f fuck up my day by watching three hours of Netflix, using my phone for four hours, playing video games two hours at night. Like, I used to waste a lot of time. And it's okay, like, nowadays it's normal to do so, but we need to do better. So for this, you are going to ask yourself a few questions. Number one, what do you do right after you wake up? You check your phone, you watch Netflix, like, it may sound weird to watch Netflix right after you wake up, but I used to do it, so it's okay if you did too. What do you do after you get home from class? When do you have lunch? For how long? How much do you rest? How much time do you chill? Do you hang out with your friends, your girlfriend? Do you clean your room? You buy the groceries? When I say everything, I mean absolutely everything. This may sound a little bit extreme, but now you will understand. So now that you have this visual image of your schedule, let's see for how long are we being productive and for how long are we wasting time? This may be a little bit painful, but it's worth it, trust me. Like for example, how much time do we, do we waste fucking around, like scrolling on social media, fapping, gaming, watching useless content? And when you see that you are consistently wasting time at a certain period of the day, you need to wonder why are we wasting time? Like, are we too tired? We don't have nothing to do at that time? Like wonder why. And step number two, with this in mind, we will build a new schedule that we will call it our ideal schedule because we have to avoid these consistent procrastination periods 
and also include some time to rest and chill at the end of the day. Of the day. This is like the rearrangement part I mentioned to you earlier. We are not trying to optimize every single minute of the day because I don't think that, that it's sustainable long term. So in this schedule we will include a day where you study a little bit, feel accomplished and have time to do whatever the fuck you want. So to do this, first we have to think about our daily obligations. For how much are we in college? Do we need to take care of someone? Do we need to run some errands? Like check your obligations and include them every day. Then number two, think about the variables that you have each week. For example, how often do you hang out with your friends? Do you play a particular sport? Or do you have a hobby that requires you to be somewhere sometimes a week? Do you go out on the weekends? Do you spend time with your family? Do you hang out with your girlfriend? Like, think about those variables that may happen during the week. Now, you have your new schedule where you wrote the obligations and then you wrote the variables for each day of the week. And now you see that you have some time left. Please consider these eight hours of sleep because if not, you won't be healthy and you won't be productive if you don't sleep well. So now you may realize that you have maybe three, four, five, six hours of free time each day. That sometimes you don't notice because you are just fucking around and it's okay to be fucking around. But we need to change this. So step number three is to negotiate between your current schedule and your ideal one. Which times are you able to compromise right now for a productivity moment? Like for example, if you consistently notice that after lunch you are like too tired and that you usually fuck around, give yourself that time to rest. But on the afternoon, try to be as productive as you can or vice versa. As time goes by, you will begin to negotiate between these two schedules and you will find the right balance for you. So once your new schedule is built, like go one step, as, one step at a time. First change one thing of your current schedule and try it, and then change another, and then another, and another, and your day looks completely different from the past. So once the new schedule is built, set the priority for the day and block time periods to do related tasks. With this I mean, for example, in university you have several tasks to do and you have many things to do, so block a certain, a certain amount of hours each day to do university tasks. Or for example, if you need to run some errands or go to the store or like something like that, you need to block some time for it. Like similar tasks go in the same time zone. Or for example, if you do some habits like reading, meditating, journaling or shit like that, block it in one specific time of the day because it wouldn't be as optimal as to, for example, read in the morning, meditate in the afternoon and journal at night because it will consume precious minutes. You could be or resting or you could be doing something else. And while you concentrate these activities on one block of time, you are much more productive and you have more time to rest. And then number five, as I told you earlier, test this new routine. And this is trial and error. There is no productivity formula that works for everyone. Some people like to be productive of the morning, some people like to be productive at the afternoon, and other people may feel productive at night. So find the right balance for you and go trying new things. This is a process. This, you won't become like super productive from overnight. Like you will take some time and it's okay. So now that we have our new schedule and apparently we realized that we have lots of free time, let's head into the study protocol. So welcome to the HQ University protocol. It, this is divided in two sections, the foundations and the add-ons. So first we will see the method and then we will see how to apply it to our lives. So in the foundations, there are three main phases, understanding, summarizing and memorizing. So let's see each one separately. Number one, understanding. This is the most important phase of them all. You see, every subject has different topics that integrate this subject and that will be taught as the, as the semester goes by. So 
it's really important to truly understand each topic and be able to explain them. Because if not, by the time we get to summarize and memorize, we won't understand it and we will end up learning from memory. And if we learn from memory, we will fuck everything up. So imagine th that the professor explains a topic during a lecture and you take notes from it. And then you realize that there is also complementary text to read and to summarize. So you read the text and you see if you understood it. If you understood it, great. But how can I check if I got it right? If I, did, I don't have a wrong idea about the subject. So an easy way to test this is to see if you can explain it to someone or if you can write a summary of it. This is why the summary section is also very important. Because if you can explain the topic and the other person can understand it and you're correct about what you say, you understood the subject. Great. But what if I didn't understand the topic? What can I do? So here are a few options. Number one, ask any doubt to your professor. Like nowadays we became so afraid of asking questions that now we don't even talk to our professors. Number two, you can ask your friends, like maybe one of them got the topic right so that you can understand them and they can explain it to you. And number three, you can ask YouTube or AI, like you literally have the chat GPT there that you can ask, explain this topic by this author and it will explain it to you, it's fucking marvelous. Or if you don't like AI, you can go on YouTube and search for the topic and you will find lots of resources. Number two, summarizing. So having highlighted every important information of the topic, it's truly important to concentrate all of this in our summary. So every highlight of text, classes and YouTube videos will be in this. This approach tip is to not leave many days go by between the day you read the text and the day you summarize it. Because the day you read the text, you will have a much clearer image about what is this and you will be able to explain it much better and to summarize it much, much better. And you will see which topics need more focus and you will see which topics you understood. And I usually do my summaries on PC just for convenience and then I print them, but you can write them down manually if you want. So number three, memorizing. So this part usually begins a week or two away from the exam, depending on how many topics the exam includes and at which rate you are completing these topics. To really absorb the information, first I read the summary a couple of times and then just to freshen up topics I summarized some time ago. And after that I use active recall and spaced repetitions. These two elements help me study less and remember more. So active recall is basically making yourself questions about a certain topic. It's like taking mini exams. So after you answered a question that you ask yourself, you will check your summary and see if you answered correctly. If you answered correctly, great, you are now starting to remember things. And if you didn't, there's nothing wrong with it. You have to revise the topic and then answer it again. And then space repetition is literally reading the summary over and over again. But it's not that I finish reading it and instantly I read it, read it again. You leave a space in between. For example, you read the summary once and an hour later, two hours later, you read it again. So space repetition also can be applied to these mini exams you take, because if you take one exam and then you take another one immediately of the same topic, you will remember everything. The idea is to let your brain forget things so that then you can try to remember them again. And also to memorize and to focus on topics, I really like to find old exams that in Argentina, it, this isn't as common as it is in the United States, so you will have an easier task. Grab old exams because with this you will know how your professor is used to evaluate you and then you will be able to give a much satisfactory answer at the moment of the exam because you know how the professor is used to evaluate and what kind of answers he likes to read. So now we will see the add-ons section. So these are kind of things that are cool to have. The foundations, you have to have them like obligatory. And the add-ons, it's better to have them than not to have them. Number one, make friends. 
studying together is a great way to memorize the concepts and also to check if you understood them. This is why I told you that if you want to check if you understood a topic, that you explain it to a friend. And also, when I study with friends, I have a good time along the way, so why not? You are being productive and also being with friends and you're studying and you're enjoying yourselves. Number two, exercise. I know that this is not an academic related habit, but exercise really helped me feel better, take a break from study and be able to focus better because after you finish exercising, you feel better. And when you feel better, you are more propensed to make better decisions. Number three, meditation or breathing techniques. So being able to understand complex topics is not enough because if you get nervous and ha have all this anxiety at the moment of giving the test, you won't be as good as if you were like super chill and having fun while you're like having the test. So a daily meditation habit is useful to calm down and also to listen less to those negative or intrusive thoughts. And also breathing techniques are great to keep it cool at the moment of the exam. Let, let's say that you are super nervous and you make like for example the box technique where you breathe in for 4 seconds, you maintain 4 seconds, you exhale 4 seconds and maintain again 4 seconds and you will feel great after you end like a few cycles of that. Number four, reading. This is especially useful for those subjects where you need to develop a topic, that you need examples and you need like more information than the text offers. So expanding your general knowledge will provide you with that information you need. And that is great. And also like reading will also make, e make it easier to give your tests and to complete your assignments. So now we will see how to apply this in your life. So people get used to studying like three days earlier and the exam and they have to, oh no man, I didn't see anything about the exam so I have to get up to days. Like it's really stupid and it's not sustainable and it's horrible on your mental health and stress levels. So we'll try to study a little bit every single day. And the idea is to maintain the habit of every day doing something about university. It may be reading, summarizing, or memorizing a topic. Like, each one of the phases can be done at any time of the day. So the point is to build a habit to stay up to date with the subject, because if you fall behind, you will really struggle to get through the exams. Number two, divide your study blocks into one hour or one hour and a half each. Don't do more than three or four blocks a day unless it's like a real emergency and you couldn't study for like a week and you needed like a whole day of studying. So if you really focus during this hour, hour and a half, you will get the most bang for your buck. And you may do even one block a day and you will be just fine. Just if you keep it up every single day, you will have great results. This is the key. Like it's really cliche to say that consistency is key, but it really is. Because if you every day stuck up one hour study session, one hour study session, bam, 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 you will have a huge result in the text, in the test, sorry. Number three, in exam periods, try to cut as many distractions as possible because you need to optimize your energy and your focus to study a little bit more because it's normal that in exam periods you will study more than in non-exam periods. So. In non-exam periods, yeah, you can go and party uh, like once a week or once a month, it's okay. But in exam periods, you need to focus. You cannot party and then waste like two days of your life because the day you were at party and the day after you're feeling like shit. So you don't have the luxury to waste two days of studying. So eliminate non-essential things and avoid distractions unless it's on the chilling time that we discussed earlier. And this way you will be thinking about the exam like all day and be able to focus and understand better the topics. And last but not least, prioritize mental health. Unwinding down after long study days. There is like this very dangerous trend in the internet where they tell you to grind all day and don't care about mental health. But mental health is the foundation of your good results at university. If you have a shitty mental health, you will have shitty results. Just check these results I'm showing you on the screen. 
there were, these were times where I had a shitty mental health and also my study method wasn't ideal. Meditate, go outside, hang out a little bit with your friends, exercise, be grateful with what you have and limit study periods. You don't need 12 hour study days to be successful at university and have a life. This is bullshit university youtubers try to sell you so that they can also sell you their course to study better. That's fucking bullshit. University years should allow you to build and expand your life, to build your body, build your relationships, build your intellect and expand your interest to build new projects. These years shouldn't be spent studying 24-7, neither parting 24-7 and wasting everything. The key to enjoying your college years is sustainability. Have fun, study hard, but in an efficient way. way. And look at life as a video game, where you can level up every single aspect of your character. Apply the method, enjoy those extra hours a day and crush it. Aim at your highest quality self. And we'll see each other on the next one. Bye bye.